Okay, so learning how to be led by the Spirit in healing is very, very exciting because you know that God is doing something at that very moment. I'm a big advocate of, of this. Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing. And this is the way I like to operate. Although, I'll pray for anybody that asks me to pray for them. I've been in many evangelistic outreaches with people that want to be trained and I'll go up to I'll go up to many many people without feeling anything simply because I'm because of the limited amount of time I have with people I'm training and I want to let them see how I approach people but when I'm uh, out and about by myself in my everyday life which is the way it should be this is a lifestyle I like to wait on the leading of the spirit because then I know God is definitely doing something because I do believe there is a time and issue uh, with God and what he's doing for people and and so like what I'll, what what'll happen with me and many of you is many of you guys know this already because I've mentioned it so many times is I'll just be walking along and then all of a sudden bzz, I'll feel the power of God in my hands and it doesn't have to be in your hands I've had I've heard many testimonies of believers tell me that they'll feel a warmth in their chest or they'll just get uh, like the Lord will be highlighting somebody to them and they'll feel it some other way. There's many different ways in which you feel this. And you can, it's not there's nothing wrong with feeling the power of the Holy Spirit in your flesh, even though you don't have to, because this has been an ongoing debate also. It's like you don't have to feel anything in your flesh, but you it's you you can, and it's a good thing because the flesh, the spirit and the flesh are li are linked. They're they're tied together it's they're not separable until you die and and when i say the flesh i'm not talking about the corrupt nature the old man i'm just i'm t the but your body is the temple of god and he uses the flesh he uses your body to do his work and so uh and i and so like this is what i do and it's very exciting because when it happens to me i know that i know that i know god is doing something at that moment so it's it's kind of like saying it's kind of like the Lord is saying, I'm doing something right now, Tom. Do you want to get involved? And, it's, <laughs> and I've missed it many times where I felt the power of God and I just couldn't figure out who it was for. But, you know, maybe in a big crowd or, or I just felt like there wasn't enough privacy because of the big crowd. But a lot of times it's it's in a smaller uh, a smaller amount of people are involved in a, in a more private area and it's easy for me to figure it out. And I'm still growing because I, I, a lot of times I'll know, oh, I know it's definitely for this person and I'll even get a word of knowledge. It's like you have pain in your neck or your back, whatever. But, uh, but oftentimes also it's, I don't know where the pain is. I just, I know there is pain, which in itself is a word of knowledge. I know there's pain there. So that's a word of knowledge, but to be specific as the word is, it might be because of spiritual laziness. <laughs> you know, I might need to like just quiet myself. And I, in fact, it probably is because when I, when I get this word of knowledge, this power of the Holy Spirit flowing, uh, and I quiet myself, I can hear the Spirit, not an audible voice, but in my spirit, give me the answer. It's in, the, it's in his neck or her arm, whatever. And But qu quite often, I've developed this habit of just saying to somebody, I know you have pain somewhere, and, and I just let them tell me. So it probably is spiritual laziness on my part, which I need to break out of because I want to make forward progress. And so... This happens all the time. Like two days ago, I was my my wife and I were walking out of a Trader Joe's supermarket, and and the one of the employees is walking in with carts. He's collecting carts, and he's going to put them up along the outside of the building. And as we're, as I'm walking by him, I feel the power of the Lord, oh, and so I stop him. And people ask me, "How do you approach people?" Well, I just approach people. Since I like the way I'm leading in the spirit, I approach people. I just start talking to them. I don't go up and say somebody and like, you know, I, I use, I'm bold. I just like this guy, for instance, his name is Andy. His name is Andy. So I just stopped him as he was going by. I was like, oh, oh wait a minute. I, I, like, I want to talk to you real quick. So like, I just start talking to people and, and, uh, and I'll use the same approach often. I'll say, I'm a minister and I can tell when I'm near somebody that God wants to heal. I, 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 I can tell you have pain in your body somewhere. And so he said, yes, I have, my legs are sore. And I just released the power of God and boom, he was healed. And, and it's great. You know, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people will mock 
you know, well, it's just, you know, sore legs, whatever. Why don't you go to a children's hospital? It's like, I, you can't, it's not so easy to go into a hospital because they don't want you. The hospital, it's, it's so political. It's all money. They don't want you healing people. You can't just go into a hospital and walk around healing people. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, it's like, and, and if, the, if the Lord was, I've prayed for many people in hospitals. If the Lord was leading me to that, I would do it. But, but for the most part, when you're in your everyday life doing things, you're not in hospitals. You're, throughout your everyday life, you're just out and about. It's not in hospitals. And so like, and you can't diminish the value of somebody experiencing a sign from the Lord, no matter how small it may seem to uh, naysayers and people with bad attitudes who like to mock and say things like that. Uh, because it's a sign gets per somebody's attention. Like this person at Trader Joe's, a worker, he was he was not sure yet whether he believed in Jesus or not. So, but he was very happy about the situation. It was real. And he said, that's really qu quite something else because not everybody has that. And I didn't feel like getting into teaching him. And he's right in a sense. Not everybody operates in the gift of healing. Although God can use any believer to minister healing. And because and, we see that in scriptures, but so I, I wasn't, it, there wasn't a, mo a time to teach him in depthly in depth, but I, all I did was I encouraged him to tell him Jesus, Jesus is, he loves you. He has forgiven you of your sins. And when I say he has forgiven you of your sins, it doesn't mean he has a license to do whatever he wants. I'm talking about in a general sense where Jesus has taken the sin of the whole world and you appropriate that gift through repentance. And so so it's it's not wrong to say Jesus has forgiven you of your sins, and, and so people tend to think that that I'm I'm going around remitting people's sins. Although the scripture does support that, John said, "Whoever sins, you forgive; they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven." So you do have the power to remit sins if the Lord is leading you in this way. You really have to have a close relationship with the Lord and be able to discern what the Spirit is saying and doing before you go ahead and do things like this. So, but he was very happy with the situation. It was a clear sign for him. His legs felt great, he was light on his feet, and it was a quick situation because it was right at the entry to Trader Joe's, people coming and going and he's working. So like, you gotta, you have to learn to discern. It's another thing about being led by the Spirit is you have to learn to discern how much time you have with a person based on the situation you're in the atmosphere and all that and what, what the person's doing quite often you're dealing with somebody that's working. And so you you do what you can, plant some seeds, sow some seeds, and then you move on because you don't you for obvious reasons. And so and yesterday I was in in fact I want to show you a testimony of this young girl. I walked into a quick trip yesterday. Today is Thursday the nineteenth and uh and this, I felt the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I say to this young girl, there's two girls behind the counter. I said, one, I can tell one of you guys has pain. And one said, yeah, one girl said, yeah, I have pain in my legs. And, uh, and she's a young girl and she, she got healed. I didn't record that, but I record right afterwards. I asked her if I, if I broke out my camera, I said, can you, can I, can I, can you do me a favor and say this? Tell me, I want to get evidence of this. Tell me, tell me what just happened. You don't mind it yet. And she goes, no, I don't mind. So I recorded her testimony. In fact, let me show you her testimony right now before I carry on with this and tell you what else I'm doing here. Uh, so, uh, in fact, let me bring down this screen and, and play this for you guys. My legs were hurting. It, just like how long ago was that? Like, it wasn't at the start. Let me go back to the start. That's amazing what just happened. What, what just happened? Um, my legs were hurting. And he prayed for me and they kind of stopped hurting. So now they had, what do you mean when you say kind of stopped hurting? Did they stop hurting or they feel good? Why? Yeah, they feel good. They feel good? And you were just telling your co worker or something? Yeah, I was just telling her my legs were hurting. Just like how long ago was that? Like five, ten minutes. Isn't that incredible? It's like five, <laughs> and, and you know what? Because you're a humble person. I can see that you're a peace loving person. And like I said, that I'll feel energy. When I'm near somebody that God wants to heal, and I felt that for you, and I said I can tell, and you said yeah, and so a quick prayer and it's gone. It's because like God, it's like saying, Jesus is saying I love you, and I've forgiven you of your sins, and I want you to press into me more to get to know me more. That's what He's saying with that. What? How do you think about that? Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then so He wants you to. He's saying I. 
daughter uh, press into me more to get to know me more and read my word and uh, worship me more because it's a sign. Amen? Amen. <laughs> okay, so so you see, now that just, she, she meant, she said, that just happened to her, but she was just telling her co-worker five, ten minutes earlier, her legs were, were hurting her. And so, being led by the Spirit, you see how quickly the Lord responds to His humble servants? If you're if you're uh, submitting yourself, making yourself available to the Lord, because that's the, the secret, you can't have your mind on yourself. You have to have, you can go about doing your everyday tasks, but there's a part of you that keeps your mind available and ready for the Lord to use you. And so, and so I do that. I keep myself available for the Lord to use me no matter what I'm doing in the natural. And so... See how quickly the Lord responds to his humble servants. So you see this young girl, a lot of young people, they're just humble, simple people. They're not complicated people. They're not, you know, they're friendly. You can see it all over her. And, and she was a little like, she started looking around at the end because her, her boss was looking at her. And, and, uh, and I, I, I was talking to him also earlier. And it's like, I can, t you know, he, he's a little, uh, He's a nice guy, but he's kind of like the uh, boss that, you know, there's no goofing around type thing. And personally, I think he needs to get saved, you know. But uh, and so, like, she was like, uh, so, like, I had to end the video. It's like, and so you had to discern what's going on. So I, I put an end to it and I got it real quick. And because, like, I'm, I'm pressing my luck as it is because here's a worker. I've got my camera recording a worker and she's supposed to be, you know, it's quick trip. It's a busy convenience store. So anyway, but that's how quickly God responds to his people. So when you're being led by the Spirit, you can find yourself in situations like this where people are like, wow, that's amazing. I was just talking about this. And uh, in fact, the guy at Trader Joe's that I told you about a few minutes ago, he was saying to me, I was just talking last week to a friend about, about faith and all this stuff. Right? So like, so God is, is quick. When you're making yourself available, he's, he's orchestrating things for you. And so... And so I, I'm going to start training more people. Um, I, in one of the previous videos, uh, a video called Where We Live in the Syrian Migration, I showed the, the home we live in, and there's a house right next to the home we live in that's similar, that's for rent. And I would like to rent that house also. I want to rent both houses, and it's still for rent. They're not renting it. So maybe it is that the, the Lord is saying, this is for you for ministry. So like, I want to rent it also. And have a and make that a ministry headquarters where people come to stay. It's a two bedroom, one bath house, just like the house we're living in. We we live in a small, humble home. We're not well, I'm not a materialistic person, and and just the basics of life. This is the way I like to live, simple. And but this house next door is the same way. And I want to rent that for for I want to tr start training four people for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Invite people, and and they can you can there'll be a set price where you donate a set price. And it's, and it's to help this ministry to continue on. It's like I, I can't do things for free. This is also the reason why I started doing some more lawn mowing. Because like we have to be ready to do whatever we need to do in order to pay our bills and not be dependent on others. But, but you, it, is, it is biblical to earn your living from the gospel. And so, and so I want to do this. I'm going to start looking to set up uh, partners with people that want to partner with me monthly. There's a link on, you'll see it in, in the, on the description box of this video and also on the video itself for uh, the, a link that goes to PayPal for you to partner. And you can, there's a little box that says you can uh, click on for monthly partnering. And because I want to do this, I want to start uh, training people. I want to go on more evangelistic outreaches, teaching people how to uh, minister healing and also continue making videos for people to learn from. Because many people have learned from these videos on how to minister to people and how to be led by the spirit and all that and uh and so people will come and stay in that house four people at a time it obviously not co-eds in the same room obviously you know so either two couples that are married or a mix that you know sharing the different rooms two rooms and there's a living room also so it could actually you know if there's like if there's a married couple and then a guy and a girl one person, the guy can stay in the living room and the girl can stay in the bedroom and then a married couple can stay in the other bedroom. So, But anyway, I'm, I'm putting that together and doing that. And also we're going to be going on, going on more evangelistic ministry outreaches. So I wanna, I'm going to do a set up a partnership 
And uh, for people that want to partner with me, and, and this is so biblical, Paul had people that were, when Paul was, the, the people that gathered around him, that, that went with him, and they, they worked to support what he was doing. So when, when he had enough people doing that, he would minister full time. And that way they would take care of his needs. And so it's very biblical to have people ministering with you. And we see this also, uh, a brother in the Lord, Doug, who was pointing out to me the, the story in the Old Testament about how David, when David and his men went out to war, there were men that were staying in the camp that didn't want to go. And they were, they were watching the women and the children and the stuff and... and and when, they, when David and the other men came back with the spoils of war, some of the men didn't want to share with the ones that didn't want to go out to war. And David said, no, 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 no. Everybody shares in it. You share equally even with the ones that stayed in the camp. And that's a, such a strong biblical principle that applies here that when you're partnering, the Lord is crediting you with whatever I'm accomplishing. That's why I don't want to eliminate. It's, it's actually evil to eliminate your ability to sow into the ministry to be a part of what God's doing so that you can get credit for it yourself. And so when you're, if you can't do it yourself personally, you can sow into it and God credits you for what I've accomplished in the spirit realm and in the, for the, the setting captives free. In fact, this young girl at Quick Trip, I said to her, do you mind if I use this video to share it with people because I'm sharing your testimony and God will credit you with having shared your testimony because it's it's you on the video sharing your testimony of what happened. So you're getting credit for sharing your testimony with people, and, and but I'm doing it for you. So you're not even putting out the effort. All you're doing is saying, yes, you can share my testimony. And she was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And it's so true. So she's getting credit for sharing her testimony. However many times her video, her testimony is viewed here on this video, she will be credited with what the Lord will say. She will will credit her with having doing what the Lord is telling her to do to share the testimonies of His goodness in in her life. And and she was like, "Wow, that makes sense." And it does make sense, right? So like, if I'm making a video of you, you should be happy that I'm sharing it for you because it's causing you to accomplish God's will in your life. And so and so, uh, come alongside me, and I'm going to make a monthly newsletter. Uh, and, with, and, and, uh, and you'll have access and maybe I, I can set up something where those who are partners will have access to a certain email address that where I know that the emails that are coming into that address are from, are from partners and, and I put priority on those emails because it, and, and there's nothing wrong with that you put priority on those who are partnering with you because you're trying to accomplish a, something bigger you can't do on your own right and so and so, uh, now watch this interview. I want to show you this interview to finish this video up of Walking in the Spirit, a uh, video I did with, uh, an interview, interview I did with David Cross, filmed by Ramona and Joseph Harris at Freedom Park in Charlotte. It's an excellent video to teach you how to, uh, some of the, the, the secrets to walking in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit. And so let me open this up for you now. Let me pull this down and then open up the full YouTube page with that. And this is uh, Legaboom, is David Cross's channel. And so like, let's start this, this interview here. Christianity is spirit led Christianity. And this is Walking in the Spirit. In the episodes of Walking in the Spirit, we're going to go on a journey and discover what spirit led Christianity looks like. Spirit. Is the Christian life more than just a church service and being a good person? Do we have access to the unseen realm with power and authority? Is it possible to know the will of God and be led by Him every day? Is it possible you're missing out on the life you're meant to live? If you desire to be free and you know that there's more to this Christian life, then join me for Walking in the Spirit because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Walking in the Spirit. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit. I'm your host, David Cross. In today's episode, we're going to meet a man that many would call a street healer or a street evangelist. I would call him a man after God's own heart. Tom Fisher from Tom Fisher Ministries is a man who understands that he's a child of God and he actually believes what Jesus says, that we would do greater works than he. In today's episode, Tom is going to share with us his heart his passion, and his journey to walking in the Spirit. 
This is a two-part episode, and in today's episode, what I want you to pay attention to is Tom's going to share with us what he has learned about the keys to walking in the Spirit, what it means to walk in the Spirit, and how to be in tune to the flow of the Spirit so that we can do the greater works in Jesus. It just might surprise you what it means to walk in the Spirit. Welcome to the show, Tom. Hi, David. It's Thank you. Have you. It's great to be here. Thanks for being with us. Well, let's Welcome. have a seat. Yes. And it's a great location, too. <laughs> yes. It's, it, and I noticed that uh, this type of park, with the amount of people walking through here, it's a great place to minister. Like, I would, like, come here to minister to people that are casual. Because, like, when you're in a park, you, there's, there, people are very casual. They're not, like, rushing to get somewhere. It's in, they're in the right posture, so... It's a good place to minister. <laughs> well, that, and this is even my first question, but that leads, so because of the casual nature, you're saying that it, 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 they're more open to the flow of the Holy Spirit or they're, they're less guarded? Or yes. What do you mean by that? A lot of times, like, if you want to, like, approach a family and there's little kids there, like, parents will go into, like, protection mode. Sure. You know, and, like, you know, what's this guy want? So, like, so like I, I, I'm careful with who I minister to in certain settings. Well, the first question I have for you today is, what does the term walking in the spirit mean to you? Uh, well, you know, I was an evangelist for many years, David, and before the Lord started using me in healing, and uh, I, I was, I read the Bible, I've been a born again Christian for over 24 years, and I was constantly reading the Word of God, and I wanted to know, uh, how to reach people with the gospel message. And so I shared the gospel message with people for many years and then started to recognize how healing was a major part of the gospel. And so like I started asking the Lord to use me in healing, use me in healing. And up until before that point that he started using me in healing, I, I, was, I would say I was walking in a spirit because I was walking in love and I wanted to, I wanted to help people to understand the truth. I had a, a true heart to want people to know the truth and be saved. And so I would, I would believe that that's walking in the spirit. And, but there was so much more when it comes to healing being in, introduced into that walk. And so, so walking in the spirit is defined in, in so many different ways and there's a progression to it really, which, uh, which, I'm so happy to have come to the point where the Lord is using me in healing, where people actually feel the power of God. And so it's a, it's a pretty deep, deep thing walking in a spirit. Yeah, Very... Well, as I listened to you, it, the one thing that just hit me when you were talking was you kind of moved from, um, you know, and it can, I don't want to call it religious, but it, um, more to a relational capacity as you inquired of the Lord, it increased your relationship, right? right? With, is that kind of what you're saying? It, did That's, it deepen it? Yes, that is so true because, okay. because for years, like as a born again Christian sharing the gospel as an evangelist, but without signs, I, I really felt like I knew the Lord, but it wasn't until I started seeking Him diligently for the fullness of the gospel with signs and power that I started to recognize that I wasn't really seeking that personal relationship as much as I could. So when I started, so that's a great question. So when I started to really inquire about this, I, I recognized that I was like seeking him yes. and wanting to know more about him and, and how he operated rather than just following the logos where the logo says, do this and do that. You know, so you started following a person. Yes, it's interesting. But you know, it, but again, it's like I felt like I knew him. I do believe sure. I knew him because, like, because, like, because the word says, and I was just reading this in First John that we know that it says that we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. And he said, and my commands are not grievous. They're it's to love, love each other. And so, and so, like, even without really knowing the fullness of the gospel with signs, I would still say I knew him because like, as I was doing the work of an evangelist and growing in the knowledge of the truth, I was recognizing that that's what it meant to know him, to obey him, to, to turn away from sin, turn away from being a liar, turn away from, from just like filthy language coming out of your mouth, that does, which is not a witness to other people, and turn away from this, that, and the other thing that you know is doing wrong. And so like, so like you can know him you can claim and say that you know him because you're obeying his commands. But of course, as we were saying, it goes so much deeper than that. So like your relationship with him and knowing him gets deeper 
you know, from glory to glory. Amen. You go out Amen. into the deep and you realize there's so much more and it's infinite. And that reminds me of uh, Paul speaking to Timothy in First uh, Timothy, where he says, uh, you know, that he would want us to become love, and, and and it comes out of a pure heart, a clear conscience, and sincere faith. Right. So it sounds to me almost like those those things are the building blocks, which kind of prepare you for that relational capacity to go deeper with Him and become more intimate, because you're actually obeying Him, and right. it's it's not searing any sort of relational capacity. Which is that? Right. It, you're, it's like you're being serious about your faith. There you're you taking it seriously. And so uh, that sincere heart, it, you're taking it seriously. And so like, in a good conscience, which means, which means obviously that you're not, you're not living with secret sin in your life. Your conscience is not seared because like secretly you've got, you know, you're, you know we've all stumbled in sin, right? Sure. You know, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. Everybody has stumbled in sin. We've had our share of problems, ups and downs. It's a, it's a roller coaster ride there. It's a, you stumble your way there. As long as you keep picking yourself up and repenting and saying, Lord, I missed the mark on that. And then it, you just keep moving forward. And, and so like, I've, I've messed up plenty of times. I've missed the mark many, many times. But the Lord, uh, what the Lord looks for is, a, is a, a believer who is quick to repent, who humbles himself and acknowledges he was wrong okay. and then moves on. It's like when we abide in him, it doesn't mean that we, we're not we're sinless, even though Jesus took the sin, he took my sin, he took my sin nature so that I wouldn't be a slave to sin. Not that sin doesn't exist, sin clearly exists, yeah. because we can all attest to the fact that we've stumbled in sin. So it still exists, he just, he just made it so that we would not be a slave to sin. And I would say that I'm not a slave to sin the way I was when I was lost in the world. I was a slave to sin, didn't even realize it. You know, but now, now it's now sin grieves me, and and when I and if I in if I get tangled and I have in sin, you I start losing my peace. So like, there's an indicator when you're out of the will of God. You start losing your peace and losing your peace, and then you're not as confident before the Lord. And then when you realize you sh when you shake that yourself off yourself by His grace, you realize okay, I got to get back on track here. And then your peace returns and your confidence before him returns and, and then you're moving forward again. And so he's very patient. Yes, he's that's. I think you just really hit something on the head for a lot of people who might be watching the show is is that is he does give you that indicator because he said to his disciples, peace be with you. And, right. and so you're right, that peace is a fantastic indicator that when you don't have it, then you can kind of go, all right, well, what happened? And then go back to him and, and repent. And I, I love that because that does keep you walking with him instead of uh, kind of stopping your walk. I Absolutely, think. because if the Lord was not giving us an indicator, if the Holy Spirit wasn't available for us to convict our hearts of sin, we would continue to go off course. Because that's just the way, the, the old man would start rising back up again, the influences of this wicked world. So, so the Lord is faithful to keep us on track. So like, I'm not taking credit for it. You yes. know, uh, I, I do consider myself a co-laborer with the Lord. But I don't take credit for it. He's the one that strengthens me and keeps me on track. And what you said, what you were just saying, immediately brought to my remembrance the situation I was in, where I was in this pizza restaurant, and I was standing at the counter, and the guys in this pizza restaurant all knew me. They all knew my ministry, and they've all been healed before of this side or the other thing. And I'm standing at the counter, and I'm saying, hey, guys, I feel the power of the Lord. Is there one of you guys need a, Lord, a touch from the Lord right now? And they were like, no, no. They all like this the, the smile on their face. Like, yeah. no, no, I'm okay, I'm fine, you know? Because they knew what was coming. They knew what I was getting to. You know, I was about to minister to one of them. They're like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. And I'm like, well, that's funny. It's like, because I really feel the power of God. And I, I'm like wondering what this is going on here. And then all of a sudden, I see this woman standing next to me that I just did not see there. Okay. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even see you. It's like, how about you? Do you need a touch from the Lord? And she was like, I don't remember the exact wording, but it was because it was like four years ago. But, yeah. but she was like, uh, no, I'm all right. I have no pain. And, and I'm like, well, how about peace? Uh, are you lacking peace? And I said that because I felt as if she was lacking peace. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she goes, well, you can pray for me for peace. I prayed for her for peace, David. And when I got done praying for her for peace, I was blasted by the peace of God. 
I, like so much so that I was drunk in the spirit. And I'm not the type of guy that's like constantly like, ooh, wow, man, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm just not like that. I'm like um, more like like my emotions. I don't let my emotions, even though I've been drunk in the spirit a, a, you know, a couple times, maybe three, four, five times. But, but this time was really, really strong. I felt the peace of God so much so. And when I was feeling that peace, what immediately came to my mind was the scripture verse where Jesus sent out the, the disciples and said, go into a town, and I'm paraphrasing right now, and find a house that's worthy and let your peace rest upon it. If, you, if that house is not worthy, may your peace return to you. So the, that verse, the scripture immediately came to me that, and I knew that she was lacking peace because she was not worthy at that point. Even though she was calling herself a believer, I said that, I looked at her, I turned to her, and she had this blank, dull look on her face because she, she saw me enjoying this amazing peace, but she was like, you know, and I was like, I knew immediately from that scripture that the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance at that moment, because that's what he does, he brings scripture to our remembrance, that there was something going on in her life that was wrong because she was already a believer. She, she, we're not, we're, so we weren't talking about an unbeliever here that was living in ignorance. We're talking about a believer that knew better. And I said, what's going on in your life? She, she was at, in strife with her husband and did not want to forgive her. I said, do you want to forgive your husband right now? She goes, no, I don't. So she was a believer who did not want to forgive her husband. And so that's the reason why that peace was not resting on her. It was returning to me. You've just watched the first episode with our interview of Tom Fisher from Tom Fisher Ministries of Walking in the Spirit. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode and that you realize walking in the Spirit might look a little different, but that all of us are capable of doing it. And we want you to come back for the next episode because we're actually going to get to see what it means to walk in the Spirit and how lives are touched and how the Holy Spirit comes and brings healing everywhere we go. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. So uh, I pray that people will, will catch on, more and more people will catch on, obviously, to uh, what it means to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, because there's a lot of trouble in this world. We, we, everybody's aware of what's going on with Paris and, and all the terrorism and the Islamic uh, State, ISIS and all that. And, uh, so we need to, Chris, there's so many uh videos about all this and how Christians ought to respond to this. I believe that the best way for Christians to respond, obviously, is through obedience and to be doing what the Lord told us to do, sharing the gospel so that more and more people wake up to the power of the Lord and recognize their identity. And then you'll become, and once you once you realize this, you'll become a more of a prayer warrior also. You'll be praying, praying more effectively privately and knowing how to love on people the right way. And, and, and a lot of like Muslims will be healed too. And so Muslims that are on the fence that maybe might be dealing with some anger issues can be drawn over to the, to the Lord by seeing a, a healing sign and in, uh, in turn them away from becoming a radical uh, Muslim like we see going on throughout the world. So so God bless you guys. Thanks for watching in uh and watch it when, when this part two of this video it comes out on uh, like a week after it's on God Faith Media, then I'll put it on a video of my own here on my YouTube channel. So so I look forward to you guys partnering with me. You can one more thing actually, I'll show you how to go onto uh, onto my channel. Let me uh, um, let me log out real quick, like so so it's like as if so on YouTube here it's like as if. Uh, like I'm somebody that's that's other than myself that's looking for me. So so this is the homepage, YouTube homepage. Type in Thomas Fisher, okay, and then you can just click on my name, 
and then you see they come to this page for all these videos. So anyway, you see my name, that leads you to the channel. So that is my name right there. It is my name here. Both of these, they all lead you to the channel. So click on my name, and that leads you right to the channel. And let me pause that because it comes on automatically. And uh, and so you can, uh, if you would like to support, you can click this link right here. All right, and it brings you to the PayPal page, where you can. You can support the ministry, get involved in what I'm doing, so I can continue doing this. And you can also see what it says here, make this recurring monthly. You can click on that monthly, and for the amount that you're you're sowing into the ministry, and uh, and then and and it's like this power in that because it 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 shows that you're consistently wanting, you consistently believe in this, in uh, in this a, a approach, so to speak, to to reaching people with the truth. And so, so God bless you guys. And I'll, and I'll see you guys next time. Jesus is Lord.